Hi everyone, welcome to Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. And today I am going to show you guys the most requested dress. Um, I did this dress um, by myself, I didn't film it and you guys have requested it ever since. So I am going to show you this dress because I am wearing it today for someone's kindergarten dance. So we're going to get our boogie on, right? <laughs> Definitely stay tuned to the end of this video so you can see footage of us getting our boogie on and we'll see you at the end. Bye. Okay, so today I'm gonna be using thrifted men's dress shirts to show you how you can add permanently pleated ruffles like these to almost any garment to create amazing upcycles. I originally thrifted this silk dress and made it look like this. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna start off with this dress that I thrifted last week. It's a bit too tight and I personally don't like when dresses are too short and too tight. I can go with one or the other, but not both. So first I'm gonna take out the dress. I thrifted a striped dress just for the fabric a while back because I've been really feeling stripes lately. I cut some strips so I can get an arrow effect going down the sides. I'm gonna sew the strips together and then add iron-on interfacing to the inside. Or heat and bond will actually be even better. It's just like interfacing but it irons on on both sides. Then I'll cut them to the size I need to add to the sides plus seam allowance. Just a word to the wise though, if you're taking out a dress that doesn't fit, make sure that the bust area does fit. Because just taking a dress out doesn't mean that you're increasing the cup size of the dress. All right, so next I'll use a seam ripper to open the dress up on the sides. I'll also take off the bottom of the dress. You don't have to do this though. You can absolutely just add the ruffles to the outside skirt part like I did for the last one. Now I'll sew in the extra pieces on the sides. You don't see the interface and iron onto the inside of these striped pieces because this is actual footage of my first attempt at these stripes. The interfacing helps them keep their shape and I decided that I wanted them to be longer and to come to a point. So I actually redid them at the end. Once you get the added piece sewn in on the sides, you can finish the edges with the hem or whatever you like to make it blend seamlessly with the original garment. All right, now let's make these pleats. I fold the dress shirt in half and cut it so that the bottom is flat. Then I cut parallel to that whatever length you want your layers to be. My layers actually vary in length and I used about three shirts for each of these dresses. I actually use the other parts of the shirts for other projects, but feel free to use the sleeves and cut those up as strips as well so you don't have to use as many shirts. And stiffer dress shirts work better than the really, really thin cheap ones. Okay, so for this dress, I wanted to create the look of a bunch of vertical black lines. So I used a black fabric marker to mark a line every two inches. That way, there will be a black line at the edge of each pleat. After all my lines are drawn, I begin to fold and pin my pleats in place. You can totally skip the fabric marker and just lift up the fabric every two inches and then fold it over and pin it in place. After I have about 10 pleats pinned, I spread a solution of one quarter vinegar to three quarters water. I started off only spraying the back because I was scared that the liquid would cause the fabric marker to run, but it actually doesn't, so later on I just sprayed it on the front. Then I iron it down once, remove the pins, and then iron it down until it's completely dry. This sets the pleats permanently. However, I haven't washed these in the washing machine after setting the pleats. Okay, once I've done all 50 million pleats, I'm gonna serge the top edge, pleat it, and then double fold hem the bottom edge, unpleat it. If you don't have a serger, then just double fold hem the top edge as well. Then I also like to add a little gathering stitch to the top edge. And I'll also connect all my layers with this stitch as well but I did keep one piece separate and ungathered to be the top layer. I'm gonna pin it to the top bodice piece and attach the edges to the zipper. The zipper was already kind of exposed, so it actually worked in my favor. Then I'll go ahead and sew that down. Next, I'll try the dress on and pin the lower layers in place. I pin it while I have it on because I need that lining to be stretched while it's being pinned. If you're doing this to something that's not stretchy, then you don't have to pin it while you have it on. So I'm just gonna pin and spin until I get to the end. And then I'll just keep adjusting the pins until I'm satisfied. If you don't like where it ends, then just gather it or ungather it until it ends where you like. I really love that you can still see the buttons and the buttonholes from the dress shirt. It pays homage to what it used to be and it's just really a clever detail. So then I'll carefully take it off and sew all the layers in place. And like I said, I ended up replacing those side pieces for longer side pieces that extended to a point. 
It's all in the details. All right, let's boogie. I am so excited about this dress and I hope you guys are as well but imagine the possibilities you could add these pleated layers to so many garments to completely change up the look if you want more ideas on what to do with men's dress shirts take a look at this playlist and don't forget to subscribe all right see you in the next one bye